So Bash Shell scripting doesn't always get a lot of love because it can be hard to understand sometimes what exactly you're coding, but today I'm going to be showing you this overpowered tool to help you write and understand Bash scripts. This is explainshell.com. I'll post a link in the description below, but what it does for us is it actually goes through the manual pages for Bash Shell commands and helps you understand what each portion of the script is doing. I'll show you a basic command so you understand how this works and how to use the tool, but there's plenty of examples below. I'm putting arrows by them right now. Before we get into that example, smash that like button so more people are aware of this tool. I've come across it and asked other people if they know about it and they've said no, and I felt like I needed to share this ASAP with everybody so you can start Bash Shell programming yourself. All right, for our first example, let's just do echo, and then we'll put something in quotes here. As you can see, I've already done this, but we'll just change it up to hello world, and then we'll press the explain button, which now will lead us to an explanation of what we just put in. You'll notice that we have different color highlights. You have this green highlight and this orange color highlight. And what you'll notice below is an explanation of those lines leading to each of the dialogues. I might need to actually pull this back a little bit so you can actually see those lines and there we go. So echo one. So what does echo do? The echo command displays a line of text. So now we understand what we did with invoking echo. Then hello world, it says echoes the strings to the standard output. So this is a string that gets displayed in our console. Hello world is going to be displayed in our console. And there you go. It gave you a basic breakdown of what you just put in. I put in echo hello world, and it shows us what each individual portion of that bash shell script or command does. How fantastic. So let's go back to that main page on explainshell.com. And if you're new and checking out this channel today and you love, and if you love programming or Linux, make sure to subscribe below. That way you can follow along with more content in the future. Let's look at some of these examples down below. Well, we can tell some of these might be seemingly hard to understand, especially if you're a beginner, but let's go to something that's uh, fairly easy. So this one right here is true. So we're going to echo success or echo failed based on that. Anyways, let's go in and see what all this is. So with this one, it may seem complicated, but basically what it's going to do is we have true. And if something is true, then we're going to echo success. Otherwise, we're going to echo fail. So since we do have a true or a one, it says we do nothing successfully. And notice below it explains what these symbols are for us. We have and or, which allows you to understand how they work. We got command two is executed if and only if command one returns an exit status of zero. An or list has the form and it shows you the form. Command two is executed if and only if command one returns non-zero exit status. Then we keep going below. Then we have list here and this is known as a group command. So we're grouping things together with the curly braces. Notice, of course, we are up above. We're basically putting together either saying success or saying failed. So if something's true, then we echo what's between here, or if it's false, we echo what's in between here. And that's all this really does. You'll notice that the shell script you're working with is always on the top and we have display a line of text. We've already done this, but echo is going to display in a line of text. What is it displaying? It's going to display these strings to the standard output or your console. So success or failed, and then commands separated by semicolons are executed sequentially. The shell waits for each command to terminate in turn. So we're going to run either the success or failed echo and wait for it to complete in order to execute whatever we have next in our script is all that saying. And how wonderful is that? That it just goes through the explanation. One thing I want to also show you up at the top is you can go slowly through these and just click explain, 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 and it'll run through the entirety for you without you having to just look at everything at the bottom. It also combines things that are alike with each other. So again, use this to understand your Bash Shell scripting code better. Anyways, let's keep going on, maybe to something a little bit harder. Let's do this find. So the find command, what does it do? Searches for files in directory hierarchy, great. Find here, since it really doesn't understand what the dot is, that just means here. So this could be improved a little bit. Of course, it's not gonna get everything right here in explainshell.com. For the most part, so you don't have to go searching through tons of manuals yourself to understand these things. It really breaks it down and parses things for you so you have it easily accessible right here. So you can do more research in order to actually understand things even better for Bash Shell. 
but this is a definitely a good starting point. So I know that this just says here. So find here, but this here is nice. Type C. So type in some character. So type F, what does that mean? Type F means search for a regular file. And finally, if we go down, print zero, true. Print the full file name on the standard output followed by a null character instead of the new line character that print uses. This allows the file names that contain new lines or other types of white space to be correctly interpreted by programs that process the find output. So basically we're going to get the full file name printed to us in the console without a new line character. Now we know how to search for a regular file in our current working directory and print that file name out if it is found. And that's really it. For those of you who want to change over to the dark theme, they do have one. It is available. Use it. It's quite fascinating how there are developers out there who that give us these free tools to use, especially something powerful like this that can help us understand bash shell scripting and save us time. So that's why I think this tool is overpowered. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.